Hello, thanks for joining us, uh, viewers of Africa Media Television. Uh, it's time for Views on the Continent. We apologize for starting up a little late. But we always thank you for taking a rendezvous to stay with us on Africa Media. When we discuss issues and events, updates on the African continent. And today on the program, we shall be discussing uh, visa-free travel across the African continent, its business, social, and security impact on the continent. Uh, it should be noted that recently President William Ruto of Kenya announced that Kenya's uh, borders would be open to visitors from the entire uh, uh, Africa with uh, no visa required. But uh, by the end of 2023, uh, in his words, he said, when people cannot travel, business people cannot travel, entrepreneurs cannot travel, we all become net losers. Uh, it should be noted a few days later, President uh, Paul Kagame of Rwanda followed suit saying all Africans will be able to enter Rwanda without visas. Neither Kenya nor Rwanda will be the first by the end of 2022. Benin, the Gambia and Seychelles had already implemented a system of visa-free access uh, for all Africans. Perhaps more will follow soon uh, some regions, uh, some sub-regional groups and some bilateral arrangements have also resulted in visa-free access and even passport-free access in certain cases uh, within the borders of uh, East African community. Uganda, Rwanda and Kenya allow cross-border travel without passports. Botswana and Namibia recently signed a similar uh, agreement. On the program today, we shall be discussing the visa-free travel across Africa. We, of course, noting it has significant business, social and security implications. What's your take on that? We shall equally be pleased to hear from you on today's program views on the continent. All right. Thanks very much for joining us. It's uh, a pleasure always uh, knowing that you are tuning to the Pan-African Television Africa Media. And always we bring to you topics uh, of uh, prime interest uh, to the African continent. And today we're looking at visa-free travel. Uh, we are pleased to be joined uh, by Pan-African uh, Pan Africanists and as well political and human rights advocates. Madame Viviana Yafo, it's a pleasure having you Africa Media. Welcome. Madam Vivian, I can't hear you, Lewis. Yes, welcome to Views on the Continent. You're live on the program. Thanks for accepting our invitation. Uh, can you get the feedback from hear. here? Well, okay. our technicians will do well for you to get the feedback from uh, here. And uh, we will be discussing with you the visa free. Uh, access to Africans and its implications, security, business, and social. Uh, but Amaya, can you hear us? Can you get the feedback? I can hear you now. Thank you. Okay. And thanks for accepting the invitation once again, Madam uh, Vivian Ayafo. You are a human uh, a political and human rights advocate as well as a pan Africanist. And we'll be discussing uh, visa free uh, travel across Africa, its business, social, and security implications. Uh, since 2022, we've seen countries uh, opening it up borders to allow the free movement of uh, Africans. Uh, generally, you're a pan Africanist. What does the free movement of people mean to you in general terms before we shall be getting into? finding out its implication on business, social, and security. How do you appreciate the fact that Africans will be able to move freely among uh, member states? Thank you so much, Lewis. Thanks for having me in. Uh, I want to use this opportunity to thank uh, uh, Afric Media for all they've been doing. I don't know how you all do it in the conditions that you work, but I, I really appreciate all of you. Can you all hear me? Yeah, sure. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. So, um, yes, it, it, it all started with uh, a few countries, and now we have so many other countries following suit. Uh, uh, Rwanda, Kenya, um, and so many others following suit. Yeah. It's a great, great idea. It came a little bit late, right? But um, 
it's never too late to 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 start up some of these things that have been happening in Europe and America and we've just been lagging behind. So it's a great thought, it's a great initiative, but it comes with a lot, a lot of um, pre-security apparatus that needs to put into place, infrastructural development that needs to be put in place um, before such huge endeavor can, can be ventured into. But I equally understand that some of these countries have been ready before getting into this, stepping into these countries like Rwanda. We all know that Rwanda has taken really some huge steps as far as uh, security is concerned, as far as infrastructural development is concerned. Um, these are some of the aspects that uh, when a country wants to open its borders and venture into visa-free uh, travel, um, it needs to be thought carefully through before these can be done. And so I applaud the efforts, but there are a lot, a lot of pushbacks that if not taken carefully, if not taken seriously, um, these ideas might fall short because uh, of some of those measures that needs to be put in place before these things are you know, these uh, uh, visa-free travels are ventured into. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Madam Maya, for just like you said, uh, we're hoping that other countries will follow suit. But the issue is, you said um, it's coming a little late, but then we need to get going. What has been the greatest challenge uh, for countries not being able to open up borders among themselves? What do you think has was that issue that's been stopping this from happening? Like just like you said, we've seen it in Europe, America, but we're not seeing it happening in Africa. What has been the greatest challenge or setback? Thanks again for the question. I think uh, one of the most, uh, one of the biggest challenge that I think African countries have faced um, is trust. Okay. Right, the issue of trust amongst African countries, amongst Africans themselves, because when you look at um, just the normal day-to-day -day travel, when I travel uh, within the Americas, it is totally free. And, and less I remind that each and every state within the Americas is a state on its own, right? There is the state and the, and the federal government. And so each state... Uh, could represent a country within the African continent, right? And so within these states, you travel freely. And then when you go to Europe, you talk about the Schengen, you know, travel, which is equally visa travel between um, each and every country within the, the European Union, right? But then when, when you come amongst us and, and you look at the way we've, we've done things, that trust level is not there. When I leave from the United States and, and travel within Cameroon, it is absolutely difficult to even get, um, get our own people trust me because I'm black, because I'm Cameroonian. They would rather look past a white person who, whom they don't know, right? That white person could be a criminal. That white person could be anybody who's just coming to take advantage of, of, of you know, uh, the country. And yet they don't know about these things yet. They trust, they prefer to trust the stranger, the foreigner, than who um, belong and who are Africans. And so that trust has not been there. Secondly, another aspect has been the fact that the leadership has made it entirely difficult for any kind of progress to, to take place. Because when you look all across Africa, dotted from north to south to east to west, you have uh, some of the most ruthless dictators who uh, have made life so difficult for even their own citizens, let alone uh, other Africans who are coming in. And so some of those measures that have been put in place 
isn't even helping because these some of these uh, um, rulers or leaders just don't want other foreigners who will come in and discover what is going on within their country and maybe kind of you know intoxicate their citizens or try to bring change or and and so so and so that's point number two point number three is um some of the reasons is because there has the continent has been flooded with conflict and wars and Nobody wants to open their borders, right, for refugees uh, coming into the country when citizens are already suffering enough in a continent that has more than enough to feed its citizens. In a country, in, in a continent that is considered one of the most blessed continents, b both above and beyond. Above means you have great soils, you have great uh, climatic conditions. Beyond, you have all types of minerals, from gold, diamond, platinum, all sorts of mineral, minerals, oil buried under the earth in Africa. And so some of these, many of these have not even been tapped yet. Some have not even been discovered yet. And yet Africa remains the poorest continent. And yet Africa has not instituted uh, this visa-free thing. It is mostly, I think, because of insecurity within the countries and uh, outside the countries. But I think it's time we break past these insecurities. I think it's time our youths take control and make sure that they take their freedoms, they take their future, they take their destinies into their hands and make sure that some of these things that will benefit them actually happen. Thank you again.